Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. I could also be a seller of options. If I'm a seller of options, now I'm going to get obligations. So I'm going to get the obligation, but not the guarantee, to sell the exchange rate, or the obligation, but not a guarantee, to buy the exchange rate. Which one is better? Well, being a buyer, the benefit of being the buyer is that you have limited risk. Being the seller, the benefit there is you're targeting income. So if the market doesn't move, the sellers are going to be better off. The market makes a bigger move. Uh, the buyers are better off. That's a, that's a simple way to look at it. Getting back to options, having rights and obligations. The right to buy it or sell an asset, let's say the exchange rate, for a certain period of time at the strike price. That's what you get. That, that is your right. You're going to pay a premium. Buyers generally expect more movement. As I said, more movement for the buyers. Very, very important. Uh, just a reminder, I see Adele, uh, Bill, you're logged in twice. Be careful because that could cause some conflicts for you. Looks like everybody else is okay. That's good. So rights and obligations. Buyer has rights. The seller has obligations. Buyer pay, buyers pay premiums. Sellers are targeting income. Buyers expect more movement. Sellers expect less movement. So I think I just went through this. The seller is targeting income. They're getting an obligation. They're going to receive a premium, and sellers are expecting less movement in the future. Premiums are multiplied by $100. So if you see a, a currency option that's priced at $1.50, uh, that cost to you per contract is going to be $150. Who determines these prices? Well, I'm going to go through a little bit about that next week when I uh, present my how do option orders affect FX options prices, and the date on that is February 2nd. Option pricing models assist market participants in calculating their fair values, but keep in mind, uh, no one knows for certain where these prices should be. Uh, everyone, we all make guesses on what the interest rate differential might be in the future, um, and not only that, what the volatility is going to be. Of course, we're looking at the asset itself, the exchange rate. So options are based on probabilities. We need to think in terms of risk and reward. Is the risk that I'm taking worth the reward? At the end of the day, which means at the end of the life of the option, the relationship between the underlying exchange rate and the strike price is going to give me my value, my intrinsic value, or what I'll be paid, my cash settlement value. Prior to that, we have the amount of days that are remaining in the options life, volatility, and the interest rate differential. We don't have dividends here, so that's in the case of equities, so it's just the interest rate differential. There are very, very important factors in determining option premiums. Options transfer risk at a price. Options allow for risk to be transferred from those that are willing to take more risk to someone that actually wants to offload that risk. is If you're willing to take more risk, someone's giving you more risk, uh, but you're being paid to take that risk. That's the whole idea of the option. So um, you can transfer risk, and normally the greater the risk, the greater the reward. So someone that's willing to take more risk will theoretically earn a greater reward or a higher probability of that reward. Strike price. This is the essence of the presentation today. Which strike price to trade? Which one's right for you, for me, for another trader or investor? Well, 
everyone's going to look at this a little bit differently. So let's just say that we're trading in November or December, it doesn't matter, uh, and we're looking at a January 105 call. Um, does it make sense to buy the 105, the 107, the 103? If I'm optimistic, let's say on the U.S. dollar Canadian, which one's best? It's going to depend on your view of the options market, meaning if you want an option that will move very much like the spot exchange rate, you might want to buy an in-the-money option. If you want to buy one that's going to move moderately, you might buy an at-the-money option. And if you want to buy one that's going to not move that quickly, at least initially, but it's going to cost you a lot less, um, then you buy an out-of-the-money option. So the out-of-the-money options have the least leverage. I'm sorry, the out-of-the-money options have the most leverage. Excuse me. In-the-money options have the least leverage. You're paying more for them. At-the-money options are a hybrid of the two extremes. So in-the-money, least leverage. Out-of-the-money, most leverage for that option buyer. There you go. Expiration. Uh, option expiration occurs each month on the uh, third Saturday following the third Friday of the month, so, and that's the technical way to look at it. The settlement values for the ISVFX options are really done, are really settled, if you will, or they stop trading at 12 o'clock noon. If I'm trading a July option, I don't necessarily care about what's uh, happening in January or February, but if I am long a February option and, and it's February expiration, that settlement day, and then I'm going to really be focused on that. So you can trade options in the equity world up to two and a half years, but in the option, in the FX world, we have options that go out at least currently up to 10 months. Generally, the greater the time, the greater the price. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, in some cases it might not be, but that, those are rare cases. Time decay, options decay at what's called the square root of time. Uh, but what we really need to know is that uh, shorter dated options are going to decay more per day than longer dated options. And all options at expiration are going to be worth zero for their intrinsic value. At the money options have the highest extrinsic time value. If you think about it, let's say we're trading at 105. The 105 call might be trading at $1.50, so that's all extrinsic value. There is no intrinsic value. The 109 call might be trading at $0.30. Uh, the 104 call might be trading at $1.90 uh, or something like that. So that call is going to be have more nominal value, but not as much extrinsic value as uh, the that's the money call. As I said, the multiplier is 100, not including any commission. So a dollar fifty option is going to cost you 150 dollars, not including that commission. Let's get to moneyness. The term, according to Wikipedia, to which uh, a derivative, the measure to which of the degree to which a derivative is likely to have a positive monetary value at its expiration in a risk-neutral measure. It can be measured in percentage, probability, or in standard deviation. Another way to look at it is the greater the likelihood the option expiring the money, the higher the delta. And delta is, and we're going to go through this, I'm going to go through this in a couple weeks when I talk about the option Greeks. Delta is the one that everyone looks at, at least that's the first one. The rate of change of the option as compared to the rate of change, uh, as compared to one unit change in the underlying. Even the money options have higher deltas. Far out of the money options have very low deltas. Greater the delta, the greater the price. Lower the delta, lower the price. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.